And this shit, the only thing that you can trust is that you can't trust. Not even your own mama. So as we move closer to Power Book 3 Raising Kanan Season 2, some of the focus will shift over from Ghost to Raising Kanan and there was quite a bit of information they released during the second half of Ghost Season 2. They announced a whole new set of characters we should be expecting for Season 2 and some we've already gone through but there are quite a few we haven't. So in this video we're going to break down all the new players, looking at the character descriptions and where they're likely to fit into the storyline based on their profile, who they are and what impact they could have. And as with Powerbook 2 Ghost Season 3, you'll now be able to find a playlist for Season 2 of Raising Kanan with all the latest news, breakdowns and analysis on the homepage of my channel. So with that being said, let's start with the new Italian Mob Boss. And this is Sal Baselli, who's a powerful charismatic Italian mob boss of New York, New Jersey. And interestingly, they haven't given any further details like they have with the other characters. But with Baselli, some of you guys may recognize him from The Sopranos. And this is something Raising Kane and Season 2 definitely needs. They need a new villain, and Raquel needs a new threat, which she is not expecting. But let's have a look at some of the cartel bosses Rack has come across in Season 1. Now, Unique made a very clever move with taking Raquel's product, starting a war, and making noise in the streets. This left Dean with no choice but to drop Raquel, because one thing he hates is attention from law enforcement. So with no connect, she reached out to Juliana who put her in contact with her cousin. Now her cousin was Joaquin, who accepted Rack's proposal on the condition Detective Howard wouldn't be a problem, and then she needed to deliver on whatever she meant by changing the game. And this is what Rack did with getting rid of Unique and her attempt with Detective Howard. But other than Dean and Joaquin, we haven't really seen any of the bosses. So Baselli is definitely a nice addition and will probably add a different dimension either working with Rack or against. So this is Detective Regina Foyle, who's a veteran NYPD detective with a sensitive yet rugged side. She's also a contradiction in all the best ways. Now when it comes to the police department, there were two main characters in Season 1. Of course, the biggest was Detective Howard because of his connection to Raquel and him being Kanan's father. And we're yet to find out whether he'll get his bone marrow transplant from Kanan, but he did survive the gunshot wound. Now there was also Detective Beck who showed she's not afraid to hold it down in the streets of Queens, as well as approaching Jukebox and being there for her when Nicole died. But one of the biggest things we need to learn is exactly what pushed Jukebox into the path of being a cop. Now, Raquel Tora, having a cop on your side is something which can benefit them, but surely at some point in the future, a cop whether it be Detective Howard, Burke, or possibly even this new Detective Regina, someone will have a big influence on Duke. So let's see what role Detective Regina Foyle has and whether or not she plays some part in Duke Box's story and why she becomes a cop. So sticking with Jukebox, this is Jukebox's mother and Marvin's ex. Now she left the family when Jukebox was very young, tried to make it in LA as a young singer, but three years ago she moved back to New York and upon her return she settles in Harlem, where church is now a big part of her life. Now with the return of Jukebox's mom, this is interesting in so many ways, not just because of Jukebox, but how will she get on with Marvin and especially Raquel, because we all know she left Jukebox when she was young. Marvin then went inside for a short period because of his drug habits and this forced Rack to raise Duke. So I guess you could say Raquel was there more as a mother and a father figure to Duke early on. So the dynamics between Jukebox, Marvin and Raquel is something to watch when it comes to Kenya's introduction. Now the next is Cartier Dunst Fareed, who's handsome, charismatic, overflowing with confidence and is always dressed to kill. Cartier sucks up all the oxygen in any room he steps into. He's got a vision for business, expanding into less crowded markets like DC and Baltimore and even into other types of businesses like music and art. And straight away, I'm sure this is someone who will cross paths with Lulu at some stage because of his love for music and art and how he's always looking to step into other businesses. And we all know Lulu wants out of the game ever since he pulled the trigger on D-Wiz. So I do wonder if Duns will provide him with another avenue because Raquel has made her intentions completely clear. Whatever Lou owns, she owns, and her exit plan is also Lulu. So Duns could complicate things further when it comes to Lulu and Raquel. 
Now, when it comes to doing business with Duns, he likes expanding into less crowded places like DC and Baltimore. And one person who we know was a cop in DC was Jukebox. So I do wonder if he'll ever have an influence on Jukebox because she's made her intentions clear before as well. She doesn't fuck with what Marvin's into. Now, Duke is also into music, and so is Duns, so there is also the music and DC aspect which could connect to Jukebox, and this is something to watch, because connecting it back to the police and the detectives, someone will have a huge influence in Jukebox's future. Now, one person who will definitely be shaping some of Jukebox's future and who she becomes is Marvin, and it mainly comes from this disconnected relationship and them not really having a father and daughter bond. You, um, want to ride? I'm good. Yeah, let's do this. I know you good, girl. I'm asking, you know, if you want to ride. Dad, I'm straight. So there was this real awkward exchange between them and you could tell they didn't really listen to each other when Marvin questioned why she didn't get an opportunity to go to a new school like Kanan did. And the thing is, she did, but Marvin's never really cared and I don't think he's given Jukebox the attention she's probably wanted. But this was made even worse with Marvin's anger when he found out about Nicole. So we're gonna see Marvin's anger management therapist, Renee, who can hold her own with anyone, especially with people that attend her class and need help working through their issues. And Marvin knows himself he's got a problem, but we're gonna see him working on himself and trying to be better for his family. Because you can tell he knows he's made mistakes and he was also sorry for what he did to Duke. He also wants to be a leader and take more responsibility, which Raquel did give him when Lulu was in hospital, but he's definitely still got a long way to go. So let's see how much he really wants to change and what truths and secrets come out from these therapy meetings. Because it is normally in meetings like this where past troubles and events come to the front. So this is something that could also reveal events from the past, which is Scott Marvin. Now, this is Ziza, who's a beautiful up-and-coming singer looking to make a name for herself with Lulu and Crown's label. And this is something Lulu muscled his way into with his love for music and because he gave Crown a loan, which he turned into a partnership. But Ziza's introduction could indirectly cause some problems for Lulu. And I'll tell you why I think she will. After re-watching season 1, Lulu's girlfriend Jessica, who happens to be Famous's sister, is pushing and pushing Lulu to give Famous his big break. And it does seem like she's someone who'll do anything to get her brother in the limelight. Now, Lulu wasn't too keen at first, and he's also got his own niece, Jukebox, who he has a close bond with because of their love for music. Now, if we see Lulu giving opportunities to other up and coming singers like Ziza, this will definitely cause an issue with Jessica and possibly Famous as well. Now, Jessica is also one of my death predictions for season 2 because I don't think it's going to end well for her because it never does for innocent parties. And last but not least, Paloma and her daughter Corinne, and she's one of Famous's new neighbours. Paloma is a young woman who's frequently mistaken for a daughter, Corinne's older sister, and any responsible parent wouldn't let their daughter within a mile of Canaan, Famous, and their friends. But Paloma is not that parent. So we're gonna see a mother and daughter being introduced who get tied into this world, which Kanan and Famous are in. And that also means Raquel, because Raquel will be keeping a close eye on Kanan, especially after Davina and all the mistakes he made on the streets in season 1. It also sounds Paloma sounds like someone who's very familiar with the world they live in, and she may be someone to watch, because we don't exactly know what her intentions are just yet. Now, I also wouldn't be surprised if Corinne was another love interest for either Kanan or Famous. Famous, or whether she's planted there by her moms to get information because Kanan will definitely go through a lot more life lessons in season 2. So that's a breakdown of all the new players that are being introduced for season 3 so far. So drop all your thoughts down below, especially on the new Italian mob boss and also the jukebox aspect of whether we could start to see how and why she became a cop and whether or not the detectives or Duns will play a role. Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.